Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Jeep 411. Today we're going to be talking about recovery gear and winching. We're going to show you how to do a simple winch pull. This is actually not real difficult. A couple of things before we start laying the rigging out is how much force you're going to have in a different pull. Four or five people could probably push this, push uh, the green Jeep up this slope because there's not much load on it. It's maybe a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds of pull by the time you get up here, which we're not going to do because we don't need to. But if we were on a 45 degree hill pulling up, we're going to be pulling the weight of the Jeep. So it's a 100% pull. If that was in soft dirt, we're gonna add more load because of the soft dirt, sand, mud, snow, any of those items add load. So we could be up to a 10, 15,000 pound pull. We have a 10,000 pound winch. We might need to use a snatch block on a pull like that just to be on the safe side and minimize the, the danger and minimize the load on the winch. <clears throat> With a 10,000 pound winch and a snack block, snatch block, we can do a 20,000 pound pull, which believe me, is really scary. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to do the rigging. We've got a, a fairly long, this is an ARB tree saver. It's fairly long. There's two ways we can do the rigging. We can put the, the tree, the uh, soft shackle through both loops or we can put one loop through the other and do it like that. What we want to do is have it set up so that the pull is as straight towards the vehicle as possible. The disadvantage to this is you're putting more load all the way around the tree, which is actually not a big deal. But this way, especially with a soft shackle, you've got more length. This is actually spreading the load out better. And it's a little bit easier because you, if you get this pulled tight on the tree, it could be hard to get apart. This way, it's not a big deal. So Bill is putting the soft shackle through the end link. Then he's going to feed it through here. and hook up the soft shackle and we'll be good to go. Pulling your own vehicle using your own winch, the winch line is gonna be static. It's not gonna be moving. But if you're winching another vehicle, like we're gonna do in a few minutes, then that winch line is moving because the vehicle is stationary and that means it could be dragging on the ground or over rocks or other things. So you need to be very careful when you do that. When the winch line is stationary, it's not such a big deal. So we're gonna... Uh, That's where that sleeve really comes in handy. Because if you're in a, in a rock and there's no getting around it, the winch line is going to be dragging across a rock. It's better to be going through that sheath than it is dragging right on the rock because you'll wear it out and the rope could will eventually break. Another thing is we're using a synthetic winch line and this is a very light pull so we're not going to put a damper over the winch line. Even with this light of a pull, if this was a, a steel winch line, we would be using a damper over this because that helps dampen out the forces the kinetic energy if this winch line was to break. So with this kind of pull, we're only going to go maybe 10 feet at the most. It's not a big deal, but you should always be using a, uh, a damper when you're doing winching exercises like this. And if you don't have one, that could be somebody's jacket. A towel, a blanket, all kinds of things. So I'm going to go fire up the Jeep <laughs> because we don't want to do winching operations without the engine running because it puts a big load on the battery, even an easy pull like this and uh, we'll see how it works. So Bill is going to be in charge. He is going to have the remote. He's going to be pulling me and I'm going to be steering and he might direct me left or right because he can see what's happening with the winch line rolling up on the winch spool so I can steer left and right so it doesn't build up too much in one spot. Right now we're in neutral when Bill was pulling the winch line out. We need to remember to engage the clutch lever so we're going to do that. I've forgotten that, gotten in the Jeep, started the engine, and then had to get back out because it doesn't work without that engaged. Now when you're doing this, one of the important okay. things is you want to be in gear and you actually... Ready? Yeah. Driver's oh. ready. Okay, Vehicle. going in. Rise. 
So I've got my foot on the brake until he gets the slack out. And you can see it's a really easy pull because we're not on much of a grade, so the slack keeps coming in the winch line because I could actually idle along faster than the winch is pulling me. So you want to slow down a little bit, ride the brake a little bit while we're being pulled. Okay. And you never want to leave back. the vehicle in park when you're pulling somebody else because that Maybe can damage the, uh, the transmission. Synthetic ropes don't have much energy in them because they're very lightweight, but it could take out an eye. And it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. So your job as the operator is to make sure that nobody is within that length of the line because it could snap here and that could be the entire arc or it could snap there and that could be the entire arc. Yeah, so there's a 180 degree swing zone from both up at the tree and at the bumper winch here. You want nobody in that 180 degree arc this way or from up at that tree around that way. Anything in between is the danger zone. So Bill was out of harm's way because he was next to the tree. I was out of harm's way because I was in the vehicle. So keep those things in mind. That's a really important factor. Thanks for bringing that up, Bill. Okay, we're gonna do another, we're gonna show you how to use a snatch block. And I'm going to use my winch to pull, pull Bill up this little slope just so you can see how we rigged that, so. Okay, go ahead and disengage. Okay. okay, now we're going to show you how to hook up a snatch block. We Probably have a vehicle that can get to us with a winch, and we're going to pull a Jeep that's in this, over behind you in this direction. So we want to pull actually from there to here. So we can set this vehicle up pretty much any place we want to using the snatch block. Either this one, the traditional one, or this, this new one. This one here. So what we've done here is we've put the strap around, the tree saver strap around a tree. This is our hopefully immovable object. We're gonna go ahead and use the soft shackle. And from here, we can either use this one or we can use this one. I think I'm gonna give this one a shot which means it comes with its own soft shackle. We can put this one down. Make sure we're getting the winch line in there. Reconnect the soft shackle. Snug that up to where it's not going anywhere. And so now the winch line will go around that pulley. So this one will take and hook to the vehicle that we want to move out. Yes, I know this vehicle has a winch. We're going to pretend it doesn't have a winch or it's inoperable, which is why we're using that vehicle and the snatch block. So here again, Yes, I have D-rings. Is this too tight to get off? Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the soft shackle. Run it through the end link. Make sure everyone's clear. Everyone is clear. Before we go any farther, I'm going to start this. Okay. Get in and put it in neutral. So, Bill, you can get in your Jeep and you can operate that controller. So, Bill's pulling the winch line in on his side. It's moving him up the slope. And that nice lightweight aluminum pulley is doing its job. And that was enough to get me off my rock in a hard place.
Now we'll go ahead and disconnect. Pretty much just the reverse. Make sure everyone's clear. We'll take some tension out. Another important thing I want to point out while Bill's taking that apart, you never want to hook one winch line up to the end link on another winch because that's going to pull that winch line really tight and it could damage it. It puts a lot of load on the winch drum, so you never want to hook up to a winch with another winch. You always want to use a, uh, a shackle, soft or hard, to a bumper or some other mount. As we're hooked up to that uh, snatch block, we're going to show you how to double the capacity of your winch and use it really pretty much just as a pulley. You screwed it all the way in, always going to back it off just a little bit. Still has the same amount of strength, but it doesn't tighten up on itself yeah. to where you can't get it undone after you're finished using it. So now at this point, we go out to a pulley where we'll need to fix the rope and back. And that essentially doubles the capacity and the leverage of pulling your rig out of a stuck spot. Okay. All right, now we're all finished with our winch and we're gonna go ahead and spool this line back in. You always wanna keep tension on it so it keeps a nice tight wrap on the, on the drum. Otherwise, it might wrap so loosely that you'll get too much in there. And like Don was saying earlier, it'll bind on the inside of the cage. So it's always helpful to have somebody else keep also uh, tension with you as well. Just makes it easier. And I always keep my hand back. I just don't like getting my fingers up here. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you'll subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends, and we'll see you next time.